Hello, welcome back to another episode of Reacher Season 2 Episode 6 Recap and Ending Explained, Is Guy Russo Dead or Alive? Reacher's second season hasn't had a single weak episode, and it looks like the action and storytelling will continue with this high caliber till the very end. We witnessed the 110th perform two distinct activities in pairs last week. Neatly and Dixon visited the Denver location of New Age Technologies, while Jack and O'Donnell went to Homeland Security to learn about AM. The ladies' situation changed from regular to extremely violent when they saw AM's men, and they began stealing missiles from Nat's cargo, which Shane Langston had arranged to occur. The information that Swan authorized the cargo added to the growing doubts about his character. Furthermore, after France's funeral, one of the two snipers who attempted to kill the 110th claimed to have been paid off by Swan to carry out the killing. This episode has the power to confirm or deny Reacher's faith in Swan. Warning, spoilers. Jack Reacher is reminded of an unsuccessful mission from the past. Reacher Season 2's sixth episode opens with the 110th wondering how the bomb that killed the sniper, the sole person who was connected to Swan, was set off right in front of them. Russo stops by and informs the 110th that Marlo Burns is traveling towards Portland. Reacher and his group discover the tracked automobile has been disposed of close to a convenience shop when they get at it. Reacher and his crew not only procure a change of clothes but also watch the CCTV tape to see where Burns and her daughter would have gone next. As the team's sharpest member, Neagley sees Burns' daughter playing on a Nintendo Switch and devises a scheme to find her by figuring out her gamer tag. The emphasis of the episode momentarily switches to AM, shooting a police officer for attempting to verify his history before returning to the 110th, who are now all situated in Marlowe's real home. Because Jane forgot to log out of her gamer ID on the smart TV, Neagley manages to obtain it. Neagley only has to use her own ID to play Jane's games until she connects to the internet. Reacher decides to take a nap because this mission's waiting period is lengthy, and Dixon goes to bed with him. Reacher and Russo split up their tasks. When Neagley contacts Jane, it turns out that the Burns are located one hour away from where the 110th are. Marlo is shown having fun with Chad, one of her friends. Reacher sets off Chad's sprinkler to entice him, and then he leads him into the garage. He gives Chad the order to call Marlo to the garage without bothering her in any way. At first, Chad won't give up, but as soon as Reacher uses a water bottle and some duct tape to create a homemade silencer for his gun, he gives in. Reacher dispels a fallacy that is frequently spread online by jokingly exposing it as a scam and showing that a water bottle and some duct tape cannot replace a suppressor. However, as Marla walks into the garage, Reacher reassures her that Jane, who is occupied playing games online with Neagley, won't be harmed. They then go on to go over all they've gone through as a result of Nat point by point. The ambush in the house comes first. Marlo claims she had no idea what was at that address waiting for the 110th. She just followed instructions to provide them the address, which she did. Second, O'Donnell discusses Swan's role in all of this. When Marlo asserts that Swan is innocent, Reacher gives O'Donnell I told you so look since O'Donnell continued to suspect Swan while Reacher insisted that he was clean. Marlo reiterates her compliments for Swan, claiming that he was the one collaborating with Marlo to try and unseat Shane Langston and Nat after discovering that a flaw in the chip-making process wasn't truly a flaw in the manufacturing process. Is Guy Russo still alive or dead? The episode's third act is a pure action masterclass, with some of the tensest scenes I've watched in a TV show lately. On the one hand, Shane's men attack Russo's car while Jane is inside. However, by disclosing that the 110th is present, Marlo ruins the plan to contain Shane and his soldiers. Reacher needs their assistance, so he tells the 110th to get Marlo out of there and to Russo, while he stays back in the bus and truck yard and deals with Shane and his guys. Reacher is aware that he cannot confront them head on. Consequently, he shoots off the tires on Langston's cars in order to make sure that no one can leave the one working vehicle inside. Then he opens a bus door and waits there, kind of like putting up a flight trap. Reacher dispatches the men with brutality as they approach the bus one by one. He drags one of the guys under the muddy, wet undercarriage of a truck in the final kill, which looks like something out of a horror movie. At last, he comes out of there to face Langston. Unfortunately, Shane is saved from the pickle by an unexpected helicopter that arrives and stops Reacher from killing him permanently. Reacher Episode 6 concludes with Russo and Jane trapped in an alleyway. As he puts out the fire, Russo gives Jane the command to flee. After taking out two of the assailants who were pursuing them, he collapses on the ground due to his injuries. When the third shooter reaches Jane, Neagley turns him into a roadkill. They dash to Jane to make sure she's alright. Neagley clings onto Russo as they contact 911 after noticing him lying in the road. Since Marsh had warned him that being a good cop would send him to an early grave, and that is exactly what has happened, it is actually a rather depressing scene. 
when a villain proves to be correct and serves as a painful reminder that the world we live in is not perfect and that the people on television also inhabit equally unfair environments, it hurts. Since the show doesn't say whether Russo is dead or not, I'm hoping the ambulance arrives on time and he recovers quickly. Nevertheless, at the risk of sounding cliched, I will state that this is an excellent action-packed narrative, regardless of the result. I appreciate that there doesn't seem to have been any compromise made by the showrunners. They know that passion must drive action in addition to loud sounds and eye-catching graphics, and they've succeeded in making every second matter. Bravo. Then, to all those who worked on producing this program, I have faith that the next two episodes will satisfactorily wrap things up. Satisfactorily